We thought it might be nice just to talk a little bit about um, how you set up a political party, why you set up a political party, how you make it a success or how it, you don't make it a success, whichever way it might go. And of course, many of you would be familiar with it, that Fiona and Robbie took the tough decision many, many years ago to uh, throw their hand into the, or throw their hat into the political ring. Um, so we might just get them just to talk about the whole process, first of all, and why they did it. And then if you guys have got questions that you'd like to throw at, uh, at Robbie and Fiona, then, then please go ahead. But uh, I suppose to, to get the ball rolling, if I just ask you both, when you set up the sex party, I, I think initially a lot of people thought you were a joke party, that, that you were just taking yeah. the mickey and, and, and that you weren't actually really running as a political party. So how difficult was that? And, and were you, from the day one, were you actually a very serious political party? Um, well, when we were thinking about this, and it, it, it was really, I, I guess, you know, probably if I thought, if we'd thought more than five seconds, we may, may have become a religion instead. <laughs> um, so we went down the much more difficult path of becoming a political party. So, but um, I still kind of regret maybe that decision, you know, should have become a religion. Uh, it, it was, um, it, it, isn't, it isn't easy to set up a party, and particularly a small party. And, and it's very hard as a small party to get noticed. Um, you don't have the funds of the big parties. We were lucky to have a really good friend in Don Chip, who was the founder of the Australian Democrats. So he... He encouraged us down this path. Um, we like to say that he told us to call it the sex party, but um, that's probably not quite the right story. I'll let Robbie tell more of that. But, you know, so when we decided to start, it was really just out of frustration that um, we, as lobbyists in Canberra, we'd been presenting what we thought were logical arguments on various issues. We were providing community attitude, polling, we were providing research, I was having numbers of members of parliament say to me, I totally agree with you. However, I hold this seat by 4%. And if I come out in support of X-rated films or drug law reform or whatever the cause may be, um, that 4% may, not, may vote against me and I'll lose my seat and I'll lose my car and I'll lose my standing and I'll lose all these things. So I'm just not gonna say anything. So in the end, we thought, if we can't beat them, then why not join them and take those issues to the ballot box? Um, it was a risky decision and it could have all ended in tears. It kind of hasn't. I mean, we're, we, we went to the 2010 election and polled 2.2%, or 2.9, something like that. Um, we're now polling at the most recent by-election in Victoria, we poll, we got close to 8%. So we're regularly polling around 6 to 8% now. Um, and we went to that first poll with the, um, with the policies of no internet filter, a royal commission into child sexual abuse in religious institutions, and R-rated computer games. So yay. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't, I, obviously we can't take credit for it completely, but I think it, taking those issues to the ballot box did influence um, the changes in policies by the, the government. And so, so, Robbie, you had serious issues, but did you find it hard to get traction in the media and in the minds of the public that you did have serious issues that you wanted to discuss, or did most people think, you know, sex party? Or, or, uh... <laughs> A lot of people did think that, Ross. Um, but we did, um, uh, we were worried from the beginning, and that's what Fiona was talking about, Don Chip's input into the name of the party. He did say to us, uh, you know, when we went down there for, not long before he died actually, uh, he said, just call it something that they won't ever forget when they hear it. Because he said, you'll have an enormous problem breaking through as a new party. And he said, the media just don't want to know about small parties. You know, they're not interested. They're just, uh, you know, they're up there with the, the Coalition and Labor and the Greens to a degree. And they don't care about small parties, you know. Um, and so that was his thing. And later we came away and thought, well, yeah, what, you know, sex, sex, you know, that always gets people's attention. So it's a, you know, it's not what we're on about only, but we'll go for it. And uh, as a result, yes, a lot of people do say that. Fiona had a meeting with the head of Channel 9 News and TV News in, in Melbourne the other day. And she said, Fiona, you're on the news tomorrow night if you change the name of your party. Yeah, you know, but before that, no, nah, sorry. 
and that's the way we get treated in the media, but uh, we're not going to duck and weave around that. I think we've got our name and so we're going to keep that. I mean, I think today, the media today about the, the government's new um, funding disclosure laws uh, was a good example about how, I mean, we put out two, two or three press releases today saying that minor parties could be decimated with these new laws um, and that in the end all minor parties in Australia might end up looking like Clive Palmer's party, you know, they're run by millionaires. And so we put out a whole, two or three media releases and we did, 2UE grabbed up, you know, late in the afternoon and 4ZZZ, one of the community stations, starting to roll a bit. But I have to say, the ABC kind of ignored it. And, uh, you know, <laughs> can I just say we'll, that we'll they would have yeah, 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 <laughs> ignored, I mean, going out there as the sex party did get us a lot of media. Oh, yeah. You know, it, there's no doubt that if we'd gone out and called ourselves the Australian Sensible Party, um, well, or, nobody would have taken you seriously. No, actually, I wanted to call ourselves the Liberal Party. I thought we were, because that's actually, we truly are the Liberal Party, you know, mm. the real Liberal Party. Uh, <laughs> but that name was taken. Yeah. What did, um, just out of interest, what did Channel 9 want you to change your name to? Was it the I Love Tom Waterhouse Party? Or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the Not Julia Gillard Party. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. No, I think, you know, if we'd be called ourselves the Civil Liberties Party or the secular party, and we did canvas those names. I mean, we mm. did look at those ideas, and you go out to people and you say, so what do you think of civil liberties? And most people look at you blankly, mm. and they don't actually know what that means. And the same went with secular. Um, and even though those are two of our, sort of our strongest platforms and our strongest philosophies, I don't think they had the cut through that, you know, calling yourself the Australian Sex Party, which did not roll off the tongue easily, you know, when you're in the back of a taxi and someone says, so what do you do? And you go, I do public relations. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays I say, I run the Australian Sex Party and yeah. it actually is brilliant. It stops conversation immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to talk a little bit more about the, the new law, the proposed new um, tax, the new funding arrangements that the, the parties are coming together. But. Um, uh, in terms of, of running for politics, do you think at all that di did you misjudge the Australian people? Are, were, are they as broad-minded as you thought they were, or, or has this given you a bit of an insight into how Australians really think? I, I look, I, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, I'm appalled by the word sex, and I'm appalled that you have it emblazoned on your T-shirt. And... But once you start speaking to them about what our policies are and the fact that every single government form that they fill out on a daily basis has the word sex on it, um, they kind of relax and... and no warning either. That and, and no <laughs> warning, that's right. I mean, I did have a woman at a market the other day say to me, I love every single one of your policies. And I thought, well, that's a good start, isn't mm. it? And she said, but I'd never vote for you. And I said, right. She said, no, I love everything. You know, your position on drug law reform, your position on the church, your position... Like, she knew all of our policies, um, but said, no, but I couldn't vote for you, Nat, because of your name. So we do get that, but then you get other people that vote for us just because of our name, mm. and I'm going to take those votes just as, <laughs> just as kindly as, as the ones who've actually looked at our policies and, and agree well, with what we say. Yeah, I think that the, a lot of people who do vote for the party out in those regional areas, you know, could be a lot of young guys in panel vans, you know, who are social conservatives, uh, who probably don't like gay marriage, they probably don't like drug law reform, oh, they probably smoke joints, but they wouldn't like the broader picture about that. They wouldn't like a lot of those things, but they vote for us because the sex party, and they go, Ooh. and they've got a mattress in the back of their panel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And sex is. Oh, there's anything wrong with that? Of course. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. Mm. But sex is one thing that they engage with, that they enjoy, and they think politics is a bunch of crap, maybe. And so they think we'll vote for them. And what we do with our preferencing, hopefully, is to then move those socially conservative votes into a progressive stream by preferencing a progressive party. So, in a way, in that way, the sex party sort of, I think, is quite progressive. So let's talk about what the implications are for what the new laws are. So basically, for those who aren't up to speed, um, the, the government and the opposition party have come together to hatch up a plan where uh, at the next election, for every vote they get, they'll get a dollar of your money um, to help them for future election campaigns. And they've kindly decided to backdate it to the 1st of April. 1st of April, of course. <laughs> so they can get a couple of million to help them in this election campaign. This is on top of the money that we as taxpayers already give them to campaign. Um, it could be argued 
both of you, that, mm. that if you're a good party with good policies and that you make the electorate sit up and take notice, that you will be rewarded. And this is a way to, um, to join politics and to have a good, sensible debate about policies that a lot of Australians want to hear you talk yeah. about. And, and I think we are doing that. And I, I, you know, not to be a conspiracy theorist or wear a tin, aluminium tin hat anytime soon. However, I do think that possibly the major parties are getting quite threatened by the emergence of small parties like ourselves that are actually hitting a chord out there in the community. And we're seeing a larger and larger percentage of the population move away from the, the major parties and move away from that. So they've given themselves a little bonus to give themselves a little bit of a head start. Um, and, and I think it is, it is very cynical. And, you know, we will eventually make it. We will eventually have a Member of Parliament. And, uh, you know, you look at the Greens, it took them nearly 20 years to do that. But if, if the Labor and Liberal keep rewarding themselves for being who they are, they're just, they're, they're just, they're giving themselves these, they're giving us handicaps and giving the minor parties handicaps that will become harder and harder to overcome. No doubt we will, and no doubt the vast majority of the population is extremely cynical about this little, you know, backhanded deal that the Coalition and Labor have done. Mm. And meanwhile, if you're a single mum, you're getting shoved onto New Start, mm. or if you're, yeah. Mm. How hard is it to attract funding as a minor party? Um, it's pretty hard, you know, it's pretty hard. I mean, it, it seems to my experience now, after having done this for four years, that a lot of people who start minor parties that are like a dream or, you know, it's a, an idea that they have, they get, you know, 500 members to register and they get a, a movement going and, uh, you know, which is what we've done. I think we've got nearly three or 4,000 members. Six. S sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only the party's public officer. Um, <laughs> so well, I'll tell you, if you're going to keep doing interviews and tell everyone you've only got 3,000 members, we'll have to sack you. I'm <laughs> like to be understated but yeah. uh, no um, you know we've done all right and as, as Fiona said you know, we've averaged about six to seven percent in the last four by-elections in Melbourne so that's a pretty good uh, get-go you know for a new party but in terms of funding um, most smaller parties I reckon do it tough I mean uh, you know we've, we've taken money out of our own personal savings we've mortgaged a house a bit you know and done all this sort of stuff to, to float it and I reckon that people who are behind most grassroots small parties do that and they undergo incredible hardship to get their party going, and they put an enormous amount of effort into it. And then major parties come along like this and just go, boof, you know, that doesn't mean anything for us. You know, we, we don't care. We get $2.74 a vote for our millions, so, you know, that's fine. But we've actually been, you know, I mean, we've not suffered in that way, I don't think, terribly. I mean, we've been able to attract some small business votes, which is good, because we are, are a small business party. You know, we came out of an adult industry, you know, small business, and it's no different to any other small business, mm. really. So... Yes. Sorry, I forgot what I was going to say. Well, um, I, I think... I, actually, when I heard the, the news report yesterday that they were going to put a dollar for, for every vote, um, because it was to help democracy, and that democracy was based on political parties. I actually got a bit excited thinking, wow, are we going to get a dollar for every vote that we get? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, this is brilliant. You know, they're going to really spread it out and that every political party that gets a vote gets a dollar. Um, I didn't realise that it was only for the major, the major three, mm -hmm. which was... Yeah, well, technically it's for everyone, but you've got, to, you've got to actually get, I think, above 4% of the vote. No, you've actually got to get elected. Yeah, so it's to, only um, for political parties or independents who've been elected. Mm. Um, and, and as someone was saying cynically, I mean, uh, Craig Thompson, the mm. money that, I guess, the dollars that Craig Thompson earned the Labor Party will go straight to the Labor Party now. Craig's not going to get them. Although some might say that Craig's done a very good job of funding the sex industry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah, it's no. alleged. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Uh, <laughs> well, it was only his credit card. Apparently it wasn't no, him. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well. So if you've had to remortgage the house and do all this sort of stuff, why keep doing it? It's a bit hard to get off, you know. It's like a sort of speeding train. <laughs> it's yeah. sort of very hard to step off it at this point. You don't, you don't think that since, since the party you started and since you started campaigning that society has changed enough that you're no longer required or do you think you still need to be out there as a voice? Well, I think we still have a voice. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that anyone should ever take civil liberties for granted. You know, they slide so quickly. You know, you've only got to see 
you know, other countries to see how, you know, look, you know, God, mm. look at Berlin in the 30s. It was great, you know. And then Hitler came along and it just all went to crap. But, I mean, uh, it, it, yeah, you just never take that for granted. Governments are always ready to censor the internet. I mean, that's just something that we've seen time and time again from Richard Alston through to Stephen Conroy. You know, they just, whenever they can get a chance, they think they can sneak in and censor sex on the internet, they'll do it. And you need a strong voice sort of backing that up all the time. I mean... And I think that with our drug policies too, I mean, look, you know, the Greens started off with really good drug policies, drug law reform policies about five or ten years ago, and they've pretty much jettisoned them now because they want to move into the middle ground and they're a bit afraid of it and they're afraid of the caning that News Limited gave them over this. And right. so there's really no other party, well, the hemp party's there, uh, you know, but we're up there at the moment flying the flag of drug law reform really strongly and that's one that we'll continue to do. And just to clarify, Robert, you're not suggesting that there's anyone like... Adolf Hitler about to take over control of the Australian government. Perish the thought. I think. Um, Perish the thought. Yeah, but I think it is as as Robbie says. I mean, as the as as the party as parties gain popularity, and I mean, we are seeing them all sort of fighting for that middle position, whether it's the Greens, the the Wets of the Liberal Party, or the right of Labor. So you do, you know, there is a space for parties like ourselves to go. Hang on a minute. And, and start raising those questions that, you know, the politicians that hold their seats by 4% are not going to raise. And so I think, you know, whether it's, um, whether it's drug law reform, whether it's euthanasia, we know that the community is, is actually on our side, but politicians are far too afraid to voice those opinions. I think uh, we might throw it open to some questions if people uh, have questions they'd like to ask. Um, Fiona or Robbie, the chap at the back's got a question. If you want to uh, identify yourselves, tell us who you are. Yeah, I don't know. What are your policies? What are your issues? What do you stand for? I don't understand. What are your, what are your top three priorities? Um, a top three, probably off the top of it that I've been discussing at the moment, would be um, a really true separation of church and state. I would like to see us review the tax exempt status, status of promoting religion. Um, I'm greatly concerned about data retention and the government sliding through legislation that will allow private companies to hold, not allow, force private companies to hold our personal information and our personal browsing information. Um, and as Robbie said, drug law reform would be another in my top three. And the good, well, the thing is, if if, um, if they're saying, well, we need to restore this, in, to store all this in personal information about people, if we don't store it, we can always just ask the Chinese to send it through. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so the question was, why is the Australian government is so against same-sex marriage? Uh, I think my feeling about that is that the, the uh, both the La Liberal and Labor Party are so in, involved and indebted in the churches and the religious organisations that they just, uh, you know, that's part of their makeup. Uh, you know, the, the DLP are still quite active in, within Labor and, of course, you know, the Liberal Party is run by a former, you know, Catholic monk or trainee or whatever. I mean, I think that... I'm not, I'm not saying that religion's, you know, necessarily bad like that, but uh, when you look at the numbers of people in, who have said that they are part of the Parliamentary Christian Fellowship over the past few years, it's like a third of all federal MPs are members of this organisation. And, uh, you know, so there's just straight away, you, it's stacked against uh, that, you know, and that's just the party line and, uh, you know, they have to run it. And that's what Fiona was mentioning before, the separation of church and state is one of the things that we're on about is that, you know, like in Parliament, people should, I reckon, have to declare not only their pecuniary interests but their religious interests. And if they actually do have a really big hook into a church, you know, like they're members of Hillsong or something for 20 years, well, they ought to get up and say that, you know, so that we know when they vote on gay marriage or, you know, when they make a statement, where they're coming from. Mm. So, didn't you, you ran with a monk once, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. um, the monk, the drunk and the spunk. Yeah. 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 And you weren't, yeah. you weren't either and the was, first two. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, the drunk was the former transport minister. Craig who, Doobie. Craig Doobie, who had been done for yeah. DUI three times. Yeah. in three months yep. as Transport Minister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're tired and emotional, that's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> any other questions from the floor? Yes, Vic. Uh, um, I, last month, 
you know, on top of the dollar per vote, last month the, the government in its wisdom doubled the nomination fees. So it used to be $500 for someone to put their, to, their hand up and stand in, in a lower house seat in Australia and $1,000 to put your hand up to, to run for the Senate. They've now doubled that. So we were very keen to run in as many lower house seats as we possibly could. Now that they've, it's sort of, they've doubled it, so for a small party, it's going to make it a lot more difficult. We will definitely run in the Senate in all states and territories. Uh, where we can afford to run in lower house seats, we will, but um, I, I can't say we'd be definitely running in, in, in the lower houses in Canberra. It's about, you know, it's over 50 grand, you know, 60 grand to run a full house if you want to run a Senate ticket in each state and, a, and a, someone in the House of Reps. 230. Oh, well, there you go. I understated yeah. it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the treasurer. I'm not the treasurer. The numbers. <laughs> <laughs> you really are shit house with figures, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Do not leave him in charge of the bank. <laughs> um, but you get some of that, if you get, well, again, it's all if you get elected, you do, there's, you do get it back and all that, but... That's right, you get back, your, yeah. your deposit back. Um, are you personally, you're going to run again? Or? Yeah, I'm going to run in the Senate in Victoria. So why Victoria? Is that, your, is that home now for you? It, it is. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm trying to get back to Canberra and, you know, once the, the arse fell out of the porn industry here, I had to move down to Melbourne. So now it's Parliament. So is Melbourne the new, Parliment is Melbourne of the porn new porn capital of, of Australia? Yeah, it is actually. Why do we yeah. keep saying Canberra then? It's I don't know. know. You know, look, I think it makes us seem more interesting up here. Yeah, well. You know, and I think we should so stick with that. We're the porn <laughs> and fireworks capital of Australia, but in yeah. fact we're rubbish at both of them now. Yeah, <laughs> well we've banned fireworks. Yeah, I know. Right, it's true. Yeah. Anyway, so, so Victoria, you'll be running yeah, in Victoria? Yeah, so I'll be running in Victoria. I, um, I met with Philip Nitschke yesterday, so it's going to be... I mean, it's going to be a fascinating um, Senate run down there with Julian Assange, Philip Nitschke, um, <laughs> myself. Um, I, you know, who, who knows who Bob Catt is going to run down in Victoria. And um, Clive Palmer will definitely be running a whole bunch of his mates down there. Yeah. And do you know at this stage any idea who will be your lead Senate candidate in the ACT? Not yet, but we will be making that... Taking, are you taking applications? Yes. Please, yeah, come and see us. You know? <laughs> come and see us before you see the play, just yeah. in case. You know, actually. <laughs> Sign you up right now. Yeah. Um, we're, 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 we're going through the pre-selection process, which makes us feel very grown up, because we... You know, actually, having to pre-select is, um, is a pretty amazing thing to get to that point that we get to choose people. But, yeah, we're going through that process at the moment. I know, Vic, that you already work for a political party. You might be interested, maybe, Senate candidate for the sex party. <laughs> be a good headline tomorrow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Stop me looking shrinking down in the chair. Sorry, uh, I've Vic. already Sorry, tweeted Vic. that, Victor, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You're in. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, yep. Yes, I, I think, you know, some people would say we've done this completely arse about, that normally small political parties start at a council level, then they build up to a state level, then they build up to a federal level. You know, we've kind of gone straight for the lodge. Um, and and would, you, would you live in Canberra if you were the Prime Minister? <laughs> Yeah. You would? Oh, yeah, I think Robbie would make me. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah, he'd probably yeah. make me live in Torrens, though. Uh. You know? <laughs> But yes, we would be, we're very interested in, 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 in running in state. And we did run in the Victorian state election um, a few years ago. And I, I think we'd be, we'd be certainly looking at, at doing that in other states. Um, well, Fiona missed out on winning an upper house seat in the last Victorian state parliament by about 3,000 votes, mm. uh, which was, you know, pain in the ass, really. <laughs> yeah, if only they'd stopped counting on the Wednesday, because I was elected on the Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> Because he's crap with numbers. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine the first question anyone will ask you? <laughs> how many days of the week are there, Robbie? Four. Yeah. <laughs> That's how many he works. That's true. <laughs> no, that's true. No, I look, I, I mean, I'm 62 years old this year, and, uh, you know, I mean, I've lived in Canberra all my life, the so I know. The Queen's 86. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. How old's, yeah. But, you know, How like, old's Fred Nile? Oh, yeah, but look at that, you know. I mean, no, I mean, I think we, we're a young party and I think we kind of might do much better with younger candidates. Well, how old's the Pope? 
Yeah. Well, he retired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, there's a new Pope. He's older than you, isn't he? Yes, he is. That's right. Five or something, yeah. He is, yeah. <laughs> not that I'm trying to, not that I'm trying to right, equate you with the Pope. <laughs> but, no. After you just bag religion all night. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. yeah. But so no, no interest. No. No, 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 I'm much more... Uh, I'm just a hack journalist, to be honest, at heart, and that's all I've ever been. I mean, I used to run Matilda magazine here in Canberra in the mid-'80s, and, uh, you know, I mean, we reported on, you know, sex and politics in, in, in many interesting and devious ways in there, and I think you I... You managed to get yourself sued about 26 well, times. Well, I did. Was th- I formed $5 million worth of roots, yeah. potentially, and uh, yeah. so I dealt with those pretty well, but uh, it, it scared me off politics for good, you know, for running anyway. You need, you need some backbone, Robbie. He looks so scared, doesn't he, in yeah. politics? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, any other questions? Yep. Down the front here. Uh, Robbie, you mentioned before um, how the Sex Party one of the things you saw is actually keeping the progressive vote going through other groups. Is that No, we're the party of whores. We kind of go anywhere, really. <laughs> the person who pays us. But no, we, we, we don't have any, um, you know, allegiances in that way. And so we'll... I mean, we... we Literally. Do, yeah. well, Literally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's... Uh, you know, if we think we can do a good deal with someone on, an, on a particular issue that furthers the progressive vote, then we'll move in that way. And we've mm. preferenced uh, the Liberal Party, Labor Party, the Greens, uh, and other minor parties yeah. in different ways. But can't... We will not preference family first. No, I Christians Australia, Rise Up Australia. Um, Danny Nully, the, oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, the Christian Democrats. Um, there's actually about five or six DLP. of them now. Um, family First tried to get my preferences yeah. in 2010. In fact, waited for three hours at Melbourne Airport to try and convince me that I should pass my preferences to them. Um, Maybe they should have spent three, hour, that three hours reading your brochures. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Look, what you were standing for. And, and then the worst thing was, I mean, I did a launch down in Adelaide, which was an absolute fizzer, and no one came. So I just happened to mention that Family First had been chasing my preferences. So you know that fizzer turned turned around. And we made front page news, and of course, Family First denied it and said I was lying. And you know, but what can you do? You know, those atheists over there. Of course, they're lying. Of course, we wouldn't do that. So, of course, I had the emails that they sent me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a good question. You, what, what's mm. the difference between you guys and the Greens? Um, we're not nearly as popular. <laughs> um, but policy-wise, I mean, yeah. is there a world of difference? I think, I think we, yes, in, in some areas. We're probably far more central economic, economically. Uh, we, as Robbie said before, we come from a small business background, so I think we, we take a much more central view there. Um, we can be more progressive in areas like, ta- you know, looking at um, the tax exempt status of the church, uh, drug law reform. So while there are lots of similarities, there are also areas where we differ, and I think areas that we can be stronger than the Greens can be. All right. 